Our referee, our referee Gabriel Machines gets things underway here. And you can see there is a big size difference. It is interesting to note that they stepped on the scales at exactly the same weight, Chase. 203.2 pounds. Both of them weighed in yesterday. But look at the size difference. I mean, Lovato's huge. He's just so long, so tall, right? Yeah, there's a sizable length advantage for Lovato. And look at that stepping in there for the takedown. We thought there would be a bit of wrestling to open things up as you know Lovato's game is definitely top pressure. He wants to pass and mount. Gilbert Burns, you could say the same. And at the very least, he doesn't want Lovato on top of him. So we should expect to see some fighting on the feet here. Man, you know what's interesting is that Durinho, he made the transition to MMA a number of years ago now. But you look at his stance. It looks like an MMA stance. It looks like he's ready to throw a punch or a kick or wrestle. You know, this is the time that he spent working those elements of his game. And he's one of the most successful in the world at that. I mean, he went all the way to the top of the UFC welterweight division. Uh, a lot of that was the success of his grappling skills. You know, 50% uh, of his 19 MMA wins are by submission. Yeah, the other 50% are knocking people's brains to the moon. <laughs> he has some, some serious hands on him. But uh, those won't be coming out tonight, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to talk about skills in the cage. Lovato Jr., he definitely uh, showed that as well. I mean, he was an undefeated MMA fighter. 10-0 and 0 with six submission wins. And that grappling skill helped to take him all the way to the top of the Bellator middleweight division. As we said, a very sad story in him, unfortunately, having to relinquish that title belt. But, you know, it, it kind of it worked out in the end because, of course, Lovato Jr., just as Gilbert Burns, they both started their careers in jiu-jitsu, in grappling. And, and now, of course, you know, Burns is still active, but they're back here in this arena where it all began so many years later and yet putting on a show for us here who's number one. And look at this. It's almost like a... Uh, the, Kind of like a cradle, you know, the way that uh, that he's forcing the head down and inside like that. It, yeah, I think that Burns' wrestling might be a factor here. 100%. You know, this is, this is a very interesting scenario here, having Gilbert on top. And I liked what he was doing earlier, as you mentioned, putting the pressure on the back of the head. And his arm, the forearm specifically, was going down the spine of Lovato, which makes it very difficult to, to bridge out of there and to, and to regain, you know, some distance should Lovato feel a little threatened. I think Gilbert's going to be hunting for that position more and more as we see this play out. Go into the uh, back to the open guard here, for, rather from the reversed uh, Della Hiva or kind of like a knee shield. Uh, yeah, but working a very open guard is Rafael Lovato Jr. He's got those long legs, great levers, of course, from which to move your opponent. But Durinho's base is looking very, very solid right now. Yeah, it's super heavy, both knees on the mat, or at least they were momentarily, which essentially means you're not going to move me. He's just waiting for his moment to initiate some action. And that's a smart move, because again, as we talked about throughout the evening, 15 minutes is a long time. There's no reason to get careless early. Let's see what the other guy gives you and react accordingly. Yeah, I mean, even though he's fought, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, five round, he's prepared for five round MMA fights, you know, a 25 minute match. He, he has gone the distance in MMA, three five minute rounds, but that's three five minute rounds with one minute break is very different to doing uh, <laughs> a one 15 minute continuous round with no breaks and uh, Durinho was like Matt I'm not sure if I like it is a long time a long time to go up against somebody like Vado so I do think we'll see uh, Gilbert you know maybe conserve his energy and we'll see more uh, bursts of activity yeah if you look at the odds that might be one of the reasons why Lovato is, is a slight favorite at a minus two one 215 because he has been uh, very active in jiu-jitsu and is you know been uh, familiar with the format more so than burns has recently in his career great point there great points if you look at the grappling career of both these men i mean is they're just both littered with accolades and, and titles but gilbert burns he does have a number of wins over significant grapplers from the modern era i'm talking about men like gregor gracie men like john combs otavio souza lachlan giles john satava you know all of these guys are very uh, active names on the grappling scene and relevant even in, in today's landscape so he can go head to head with these guys even though he's not as active in, in grappling as he maybe once was absolutely absolutely some impressive names there and goes to show that he's Always game to try. That's what I love about Gilbert Burns. I mean, he's a serious contender in the UFC, but he's taking very hard grappling matches oh, yeah. just to stay sharp and because he loves to do it. And, you know, that's something that's amazing to witness here. Oh, Look at that. See, yeah, Lovato using Lovato. That long, those long legs to momentarily go into the Della Hiva X guard, the nice. Della X guard. And uh, I did wonder how long it would be before we start seeing Lovato using his, his length. Because right now, it's almost like he's inviting uh, Burns in to make a connection. But 
You have to wonder if we'll see some wrestling up from Lovato as well. You, I, you have to believe that he wants to be on top, right? He's looking for yes. his moment to sweep. But sweeping is so hard in Nogi, and especially uh, the prospect of sweeping someone like Gilbert Burns. So, so we're, we're going to see the judges' favor now and see which way they're going. And so far, they seem to indicate Rafael Lovato Jr. Of course, it's very hard to say... Uh, there's no clear winner at this stage. Very the slight match. advantage I at think most. They're yeah. Really, just looking at intention. Look at Lovato hunting here for Omoplata. Uh, not the most common move in no gi, but you know, I like what he's thinking. He's, he's looking for new looks and going under Gilbert here. But Gilbert's got a nice uh, bite there with his toes underneath the leg of Lovato. Yeah, and you know, the leg locks are no stranger for Burns. He's been working extensively with Wagner Hocha. In fact, even size Wagner as his coach nowadays. And uh, of course, you know, Gilbert Burns represents Fight Sports and Burns BJJ, his mm -hmm. own team based in Southern Florida and training with those absolute monsters there at Roberto Cyborg's Fight Sports gym. And he's done a lot of work one-on-one -on -one with Wagner Hocha because Wagner, even though he is a, uh, an older athlete, he's, uh, he's been phenomenal in adapting to that leg game. Uh, and really, he's on the cutting edge of that technology. And uh, I feel like he shared some of that with Gilbert. Yeah, well, he, he definitely should because I think Lovato is potentially showing some signs of entering the legs here. He's looking towards uh, single leg X and seeing what he can get out of that. You know, we might see some leg lock attacks from Lovato, which is definitely not traditionally his route to victory. Yeah, great point, actually. You know, it's, um, it's not his wheelhouse, that's for sure. Uh, he's never been the kind of guy to go after the legs. He's always been much more of that. I don't want to say old fashioned. I kind of do say old-fashioned, but I mean that good old-fashioned. Do you the, mean... The meat and potatoes traditional... Timeless? Timeless jujitsu, exactly, as he had on his shirt yesterday at the weigh-in. So Lovato Jr., you know, you see in his corner, you've got a, a great example of the uh, of one of the best of the golden era of jujitsu in Shanji Hibero, and then you've got one of the best current of the modern era in Victor Hugo. Those two men sat in his corner, so he really... And Lovato straddles those kind of generations, you know? He's... Uh, it really is a um, very interesting kind of combination because we know that he's been exposed to the modern jiu-jitsu. It's not that he can't do it, but he will always go for the, 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 the basics, the fundamentals. You can see right there, Victor Hugo in the black shirt, Shanji Hibero in the, in the white. Oh, and there we see Lovato going high for the Omoparta. Look at this. Got a nice uh, bite in that, but yeah, Burns right, right out of danger. Out. This gives Levi, this gives Burns a good uh, opportunity to pass the guard now, but maybe for a moment. But Lovato get those those frames right in front. He's so long, creates so much distance in an instant. That was a great look from Lovato, though. Very interesting uh, tactic to go for that omoplata there. But Burns cleverly extracts himself from danger. You know, got to think a gi would have made that a lot more helpful, <laughs> but yeah, that's not what we're looking at tonight. Now look at Lovato, he's underhooking the leg, or he was momentarily there. You know, again, I, I want to say he's thinking about some legs, but now he's going for a Khmer, potentially. So this knee shield position, once again, you know, it, it doesn't look like much of an offensive guard, but you'd be surprised what you can actually do from here. You know, it's very easy to throw that leg up for the omoplata, just like you were mentioning there just a second ago, the moment that he gets that elbow separation. And, of course, you know, that hook that he has here, it does enable him, should he manage to get the elevation, he could get in on the legs. But Burns' base is so good, and I like the way that he's maintaining that kind of control the back of Lovato's head. It's making him very difficult for him to get underneath on his terms. So, that Burns is, is clinch fighting from this position is on point. Yeah, we're seeing a little micro battle here. We were as Lovato tries to underhook Burns' left leg and Burns is doing his best to, you know, cross face and pressure into him to avoid that. But for at least two minutes there, that was kind of the battle playing out. Let's see if Lovato changes tactics as he inverts around. Yeah, we don't see Lovato invert like that very often, but he does so with good reason. He's got a good grip of the ankle still, but... You know, we're just approaching the 10 minute mark in this match so far. And I'm wondering strategically if Lovato is going to accelerate in this final five minutes. But let's see, let's see how it goes. I was gonna ask out of Burns, right? I feel like Lovato, yes, being coy, but is inverting, is showing signs. We saw the Omoplata. Mm -hmm. And again, Burns is pressuring in, but I haven't seen him really force something yet. He's, I right. think, 
still measuring, if you want to call it that. Yeah, but I mean, you know, 10 minutes into a 15 minute match, he definitely needs to be active, proactive, and, and not just reactive to, to Lovato's attacks, but there, there it is. Exactly, yeah. to launch his own attacks just like this, crushing the legs to the side, doing his best to kind of smash those legs and pass, but Lovato able to, oh, look at that, going high here, going high, looking for the Omoplata. Again, Judges favoring so far. The red. Rafael Again, Lovato I still Jr. think that's a very narrow margin at this point. It's so close. And I liked what I was seeing from Gilbert Burns just a moment ago. Heavy pass attempts. Again, he's ramping it up. We're in the last five minutes. It's the time where we're going to see most likely the significant action of this match. Let's see if uh, someone can edge out a lead, a serious lead here. Oh, coming up high on the guillotine there for briefly it was Lovato Jr. But that's a big, thick neck there that Gilbert Burns has got. It's going to be very, very hard to kind of choke him with that. But... You're going to need to get him dead to rights to do so. Yeah, I think I think uh, the moral of the story so far has been Burns' base, right? I mean... Uh, oh, man, I actually hear them drawing at each other. You know what? Shanji is kind of urging. He's saying to Burns, he's saying, come on, go forward, go forward, go forward. And Burns has even responded back. He's like, I'm trying, man, I'm trying. And then you see this burst of activity. <laughs> I like that a little bit of psychological warfare from the sidelines there. But, you know, man, Lovato Jr., he's so accomplished. He Stop. was the Let's first person to achieve the IBJJF Grand Slam. In 2007, he won the European, the Pan, the Brazilian National Championships, and the World Championships all in the same year. First time that had been done. Yeah, incredible history inside of Jiu-Jitsu and mixed martial arts, Rafael Lovato. And it's you know, a real pleasure to see him still doing it. It's incredible at the top of the game here. His last Nogi super fight was over a year ago. It was February in 2020. He has been competing since then. He had a number of... Gi oh, look at that. Guard pass. pass here from Jorinho Burns. Pops over to the side now, trying to settle down. But Lovato Jr. doing his hardest to recover. Almost managed to get that half guard. But look at this. Jorinho going for the back now. Got one hook in. This is significant. We have almost three minutes remaining in this match. And Jorinho looking close to getting on the neck here. Incredible Two moment. hooks in. Fighting for the seatbelt. Lovato Jr. Oh man, switches to body the body triangle. On. This is going to be hard for Lovato to escape from. Durinho can put the squeeze on here at the same time as working on the neck chase. I think the tide has completely shifted in this match so far. I mean, it'd be hard to argue otherwise. That was an incredible transition there from Gilbert Burns. Way to hunt the back. And now he's got a lot of time. It's all, nearly three minutes left to work, and he's really crushing the face now of Lovato, making things miserable. This is a serious uh, serious position for, for Burns, and he could choose to ride it out and probably have enough, I would say, to take the judges. I think he's going to go for the choke, man. I, I think don't he's going to leave he, it yeah, out, yes. Absolutely. I mean, he's got this position. You work so hard for it. Why not make the most of it? And you can see him going for the, le for the neck once again. Lovato Jr. is having the hand fight desperately to make sure that he stays out of danger. Lovato's the shoulders are getting very close to the mat here, though. He's got three quarters, I want to say, of the way there. Right. We could see Burns bail on this position and maybe move to the mount. But uh, I'm just stunned by the speed at which Burns was able to accelerate, the way that he was able to go from a relatively neutral position to such a dominant position in the blink of an eye. And there, great guard recovery there from Lovato Jr. Escaping from that, but that position it means so much. I may even say, I may even go out on a limb here and say that that work from Burns will basically uh, it, it supersedes everything that Lovato had done in the match until that point. It's definitely, I believe, the most critical moment of the match. And it, man, it, it's the Gilbert Burns of old. That's that's the world champion IBJJF Gilbert Burns right there. So much speed, connection, and, and in a f flash, you right. know, he's on the back. Very impressive work. But for I equally impressive, you might argue, for Lovato to get out of that position. Oh yeah. And uh, he has to know he's got to get get a finish or something seriously close. There's a sense of tie. urgency now. Yeah, he knows he's got just over a minute left. That he can't just hang out now. He gets. He needs to get really busy, right? And there's not that much time left, so we may see some fireworks here as we enter the last minute of this match. Big movement there from Lovato Jr., but okay, man, Burns has got an answer for everything so far, and I wonder if Lovato's game plan, that, that you know, it's uh, he's going back to the same positions that he wasn't necessarily successful with earlier. It feels a little bit like Groundhog Day. I think he needs to just throw caution to the wind here and get after it. Once again, go for leg trying. now, He's but look trying. at this, look at this. It's hard. Got time, it's just about 37 seconds remaining in this match. He's got the leg, but can Burns detach himself from this predicament? 
comes up on the neck. Oh, it's a guillotine attack there, but comes up on top. Doesn't quite get the neck. Burns should be safe here from this position. About 20 seconds remaining. Oh, Burns might be on the back again. But they're getting extremely slippy at this point. After almost 15 minutes of fighting, the sweat, a massive factor, doing their hardest to try and drag each other into these positions, but too little, too late. We're gonna go to a judge's decision and see how they call this one. Burns with his hands up upon getting to his feet. Noticeable that Lovato does not raise his hands, but let's see what the judges have to say. It's the blue corner, unanimous for Gilbert Burns. And your winner, Rep.